Thank you. So, Will Duran used to say that every science begins as philosophy and ends with art. This TEDx event today has provided you scientific information and even philosophical perspectives surrounding the notion of crisis. So by now, I think that everyone has pretty much known the, the very definition of crisis itself. I think that generally in difficult time, we usually discuss crisis as a very serious and macro concept. We try to find solutions. We discuss ways and methods of normalization to turn the tide in our favor. And because I am like the last person to do a presentation, I will give you the final piece of solution. Um, so, talking about solution, I don't know if you know this, but solution actually has a double meaning to it. The first meaning is a noun of to solve, means the answer to a problem, a way to solve something, right? But if you turn to look at the word solution from the chemistry perspective, it actually means a mixture of liquid, a liquid mixture. So I will give you a dose of art to the crisis solution because I believe that art plays a very important role in normalizing crisis. And what is art? My talk will more mainly focus on music, film, and storytelling, and how they has helped us during the darkest moments of our lives. So first, I want to talk about art as a communicative partner. Personal story, flashback five or six years ago when I was still studying in Australia, Whenever I feel homesick, I usually listen to sad music about family and homecoming. <laughs> and the sadness in me rise, but then I also feel more comfort, more comfortable, more soothing. So it's funny how in moments of depression and sadness, we never listen to music with happy vibes. We always listen to music that are very, very sad. I mean, how many people in this room have listened to Adele when they are heartbroken? Answer yes, if you agree. You are, do you have, see, see? You, you, when you are heartbroken, you, you, you listen to Adele. You don't actually listen to happy music. You listen to heartbroken music. Yeah. So when you listen to a sad music, you actually find comfort in a communicative partner, a songwriter who speaks to you on a collective level, pointing out your inner feelings with, you know, relatable lyrics and melodies. And you don't just listen alone. Out there are many people who share the same feeling with you, are also listening to Adele. Also, they also listen to the same music and you imagine that community where you belong to your, in your own head. I mean that when you when 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 you listen to a song, actually you're imagining that wow, a lot of people is actually listening to this song with me right now. They they share the same feeling, and this is what Benedict Anderson called the Imagine Communities, his most famous concept. So, can I have the slide of Benedict Anderson, please? Yes, this is Benedict Anderson and his famous concept of the imagined communities. Originally, this concept was used to define a nation back in the old days, but I think this day it can apply to a lot of smaller and distinctive communities, even like fandoms. So, for example, when I listen to a sentimental song about going home for that, you know, those TVC songs that you usually listen to during the, the, the holidays, as an international student, I imagine a bigger community of Vietnamese people who did not get the chance to fly home like me. And even though I have never met them in person, I still know that that community exists and that I am not alone. So that's why Anderson said that a nation is imagined because the members of even the smallest nation will never know most of their fellow members, meet them or even hear of them, yet in the minds of each leaves the image of their communion. So you'll see. Art is like a communicative partner that makes you feel supported during your crisis. Trust me, finding the right song when you feel down is like having a free therapy session. Yep. Okay, so first, art is a communicative partner. Secondly, I will talk about how art is like a means of escapism. 
And when you talk about escapism, nothing gives you a sense of escapism like films do. The earliest form of film is cave paintings, and a fire created a sense of escapism for the people who live inside the cave in the past, the prehistoric people. They create, you know, a kingdom of shadows. And even Maxim Gorky, the author, when he attended his first film screening, he said, ah, last night I was in the kingdom of shadows. So imagine this. Have you, have you guys returned to the cinema yet? Since, since the cinema opened? Since the cinema reopens, have any one of you went to the movie yet? Not yet, okay. But, okay, I will give you a reason to return to the cinema. Imagine this. The layout of the cinema, the design is perfect for you to direct your film presence into the big screen. Why? Imagine this. Dark room, comfortable seat, surrounding cells all around you. A perfect condition for you to fully focus on the only source of light in such an environment. And that only source of light is the moving images in front of your eyes. So, the screen suddenly became a gateway. Okay, what do you do during lockdown? Any one of you watch Netflix or TikTok or YouTube? Okay, <laughs> no, we don't promote illegal websites here, people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Netflix, anyone watch Squid Games? Money Heist, Grass Landing on You? Those favorite titles during the lockdown. <laughs> see, see, right? Yep, so you see, the rise of streaming services during the pandemic proves one thing that when you are trapped in your own house, the only way out is through the small screen on your hand, in your hand. I'm going to introduce a thesis by Kendall Walton called the Transparency Thesis. For Kendall Walton, cinema is like a photographic realism. So what I'm saying is that the cinema, the screen is like a transparent window that transfers you into a whole new reality and you live inside that reality it's like a whole new world for you. You can step right through the screen. It, it gives you a new sense of reality. And it's the same thing with art galleries and fiction books. They are all gateway to help you escape. And I would like to quote one very powerful quote by J.K. Rowling. Whether you come back by page or by the big screen, Hogwarts will always be there to welcome you home. Raise your hand if you are a Potterhead. I am a Slytherin. <laughs> I am a Slytherin, <laughs> okay, yep. <clears throat> and Guillermo del Toro, my favorite director, he is famous for his approach, his stylistic approach called magical realism. And he used this approach in his movie, Pan's Labyrinth, where he tells the story of a little girl who escaped to the fantasy world through her fairy tale book in order to cope with the grow reality of war she has to live in. This is a very wonderful movie that I, I, I really suggest that you, you all watch it. Yeah. He also directs The Shape of Water. Yeah. So, as I have said, art is like a mean of escapism. It does not necessarily solve your crisis, but it gives you a sense of freedom and positivity to overcome it. And third, I would like to discuss art as a mirror for self-reflection. Crisis in our life has not only been normalized by art, but also made positive, more poetic, more, you know, easier to digest. In storytelling techniques throughout human history, crisis has long been known as a vital plot point to mark a character or the protagonist's significant transformation. From ancient myths, fairy tales, to blockbuster movies like these movies, to even modern stories of success, crisis exists to make us feel more relatable. I mean, look at all these movies, you see? Have any one of you watched, you know, Avatar, Soul, Moana, Cheng Ti, Doctor Strange? See, Jack Sully in Avatar lost the trust of the Navy people. Doctor Strange lost his master, the Ancient One. Moana was left alone in the ocean by Maui. Jang Ti found out that his destination does not give him any information about his birth father. 
and Joe faces his existential crisis from having fulfilled his lifelong dream of playing jazz music in a professional band. Those crises happen in the two-thirds of the movie, and it gives space for the character to grow even further into a better version of themselves and with new ideas and attitudes they are willing to share to us to make us feel better. So you see, crisis makes every great hero feel more relatable. Without crisis, the hero cannot transform to his ultimate form to fulfill destiny. And this is what Joseph Campbell called the hero's journey. Every story about heroes always circle around the hero's journey. And to talk about the hero's journey by Joseph Campbell, it will take me another TEDx talk. So I'll save it for another day. <laughs> okay. So you see, art embraces crisis. To fall before a certain crisis, it's just a temporary phase. Art learns from humans and humans learn from art that when there is a will, there is a way. Art and humans are inseparable entities. So, communicative partner means of escapism mirror for self-reflection. After all, I think that it has pretty much proved that how art has helped us in our crisis. But as we inspected how impactful art is in crisis normalization, it is fair that we ask ourselves, are we putting art in crisis? Are we doing something to help art during its crisis? I would like to bring up this question. Is it true that the audience nurtures artists rather than the artist nurture the audience? It is a very sensitive issue that I come across on social media over the past few months and if I translate it to Vietnamese then you might have heard it somewhere. Khán giả nuôi nghệ sĩ hay nghệ sĩ nuôi khán giả? You are all familiar with this, right? Yep. So, okay. This has been a very sensitive issue debated all over social media during the past few months and one random bypasser I saw on Facebook said this If the Vietnamese showbiz disappeared, life still goes on Nothing changes, nothing different, everyone is still fine So it is thanks to the audience that Vietnamese artists still have jobs these days Do you agree with this statement? Do you agree that if the Vietnamese showbiz or the art and entertainment industry disappear one day We are still fine? Disagree, disagree, no, 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 I'm not fine. Yes, I'm not fine too. I say that if the entertainment industry disappear, then we will be in deep, deep, deep trouble, deep crisis that we don't even know how to get out of it. So when this topic is discussed, we are drawn to this binary thinking that somehow there are two opposing forces, artists and audience. This leads to the identity crisis of the art and many of you, I believe, have heard about identity crisis in the session of An Uile. And now we are talking about the identity crisis of art as it struggles to understand where its mission lies. Does art serve as a means of expression for artists or at the end of the day it works as a foundation of an economic relationship between the seller and the consumer in the age of consumerism? So I raise this matter not to find an ultimate answer. Trust me, I don't need an ultimate answer for this. I just want to emphasize that the rising tension we unknowingly created with this question has somehow blinded us from the fact that both sides, audience and artist, nurture the art. Those, we focused on the winner. And because we are so crazy about who will be the winner, that we forgot about art itself, and then we hurt the art. So, understanding the importance of art and the coexistent relationship between different forms of art and the audience is the key to a more sustainable future. And we need to admit that as much as art needs us to survive, we need the art as well. Because as I have said in my presentation, our crises seem to be a tad less serious with a dose of art. And just to end this presentation, I would like to quote a very, a very ordinary man on Twitter. His name is Chishnu, and he gives one of the most inspiring quotes ever. 
as you binge watch your 13 entire series or read a book or sleep to music, remember. Remember that in the darkest days when everything stopped, you turn to artists. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Thank you.